Hey everyone, welcome back. Really quick today, I just want to show you guys this cool application using ChatGPT to help you answer coding questions from Coursera website. So, as a full disclaimer, I want to say that the content of this video is obviously a double-edged sword, right? Some people are going to watch this video and then go online, start Googling stuff, or throw your questions from your Coursera assignments in ChatGPT. Some people are going to hate it. Let me just take a step back from all of that and say in good faith that I hope all my audience is taking a positive perspective on using this type of technology. Obviously, don't cheat, right? And here's also a message to the instructor, Luis. Luis, if you're watching this video, I like your courses a lot. I truly enjoy the coding exercises, but it is interesting and probably worth your attention to see how ChatGPT can be implemented for future classes when it comes to coding exercises. What are some gotcha scenarios? What are some caveat scenarios, right? I think and I hope that my video can get you guys started with that conversation and hopefully we can come up with a well-rounded strategy and have students better take advantage of all the amazing technologies out there. And again, Luis, you're an amazing instructor. Thank you so much for providing this class. So me personally, when I have time, I go on Coursera to do a couple of courses. And this course that I'm currently doing is called Calculus for Machine Learning and Data Science. It's a cool course. I really enjoy lots of math, which is a lot of fun for me. So I click in this course, which I already did, and then it will lead me to this page that has lots of videos I can watch. And end of the video, obviously, you have this programming exercise. So you can access the programming exercise if you feel like you're ready for the tests. And then it will lead you to this page with this Python notebook here that you can read through and type in your code in these exercises one by one and then you're going to receive a grade, which is pretty cool, and then you can move forward from there. So it turned out that over the weekend, I was playing around with this myself, and it's surprising to me that ChatGPT is actually able to answer most of these coding questions without any bug. So let's take a look. This current assignment I'm opening is the week three assignment for the second course of the certificate. So what this notebook is doing is introducing a basic classification problem using neural networks. And you have a bunch of math here explaining how neural networks work and all these neurons and all the math, which is pretty cool. And that's your forward propagation. And down here, you have your cost function, gradient descent algorithm. Uh, that's your Hessian matrix and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to bore you with the math, but here's the code in regard to this exercise. You create a scatter plot, look just like that, right? You have your x-axis, y-axis, and then you have a bunch of dots that are different colors. The goal is simple. The goal is to train a model to classify these groups of dots into two different colors, blue color and red color. So as you can see, they are pretty much separated very clearly. You can draw a horizontal line, a vertical line. You should be able to classify this without any problem. So the task itself is not a horribly difficult task. Here's the exercise, right? And let's start with the first one. The first exercise said to define a sigmoid activation function. And either you know it or you don't. And this is how you do it if you know it. But let's say I don't know it. I have no idea how this thing works, right? I can literally go in here, copy this line description of the problem statement, and I can simply copy and go to ChatGPT and tell it to write a Python script for me. So I could say write the above function in Python. And you wait a little bit, boom, and now it starts to generate answers. So ChatGPT is trying to interpret what I just typed and trying to come up with a scenario that makes sense. And then on top of that, uh, hopefully we're seeing Python code. And there you go. You have Python code here that is saying import NumPy. That's what we need. And you say sigmoid function. That's also what we need. And you generated the return. Now, of course, this is not quite exactly what we needed because what we needed is this template to define the result as RES. But that being said, everything else, it's pretty straightforward. I can literally copy this, and I can go in here. I can run it. Boom. There's your answer. So I thought that was pretty cool to share with you guys. And you're not surprised, which it's okay, right? Because this is a relatively simple task, and the task by itself is independent. There's no context clue. You don't need any hint. And the problem is clearly stated as itself in that statement. So if you're not surprised, which is fine, the next exercise will take a little bit more brain power. So in exercise two, it's actually very interesting. So in exercise two, we need to define a neural network structure. And this exercise actually does not have a 
problem statement that's very clear by itself that holds a lot of context clue. So if you just show me define three variables of input layer, hidden layer, output layer, it will take a little bit more for someone to know, ah, we are talking about a neural network model. So let's take a look at how ChatGPT is responding to this one. So I go in here, I can literally copy this, and I'm going to not use the hint for now. I'm only going to copy the problem statement without the hint, and let's go into ChatGPT and see what it does. So I paste it here, and I also say, write a Python script to define layer sizes using the three variables above. So now here you go, this is the output, but here's the problem. The output is hard-coded, right? It's defining this variable as four. The next variable is defined by two, and then the third variable is defined by one. So it's hard-coded, and it is not really a function. It doesn't really solve this exercise problem for us, right? It's still far away. So what this function is doing is it's actually taking x and y as input, and then the dimensions are generated from those input. Okay, so in other words, there's a little bit more brain power to just defining them hard-coded by 4, 2, or 1. Now, I haven't really given a whole lot of hint, right? But what if I copy this middle part, that's pseudocode, to ChatGPT and give us extra hint? Let's take a look how that works. So here's my original problem statement. Now I'm going to copy this hint in there as well. So I can say use a hint above to write a Python function. And there you go. Now ChatGPT is actually able to take this hint as given and somehow create this answer prompt by thinking what I'm trying to do. And this is what is getting surprising to me. It even created a name of the function that I did not enter as a question. There's nowhere in here I say name the function layer sizes, but it's actually able to just grab that as a key to define the function. And then it has arguments, it has returns, and boom, there you go. In the middle is exactly what I asked you to do. And then here's another caveat. It says n sub h set it equal to 2 for now. And it's able to define that hard-coded in the middle of the code. And look at this. This code is exactly the same as what it should have been if it were coded by humans. So from this exercise, it already shows that ChatGPT is already able to code at a human level. So if that doesn't surprise you, let's continue. The next exercise in this coding assignment is to create a function that initializes your parameters. Because in neural networks, the original parameters are all randomly initialized. So we're talking about a big function that somewhere in there, you need to define some random numbers using random number generator. So the concept is not hard by itself, but let's see if ChatGPT can help us solve this problem. So what I can do is I can copy the problem statement and the instructions, and I can literally just paste in ChatGPT. And here, notice that I did not say to write any Python function, right? I did not say anything about Python. I just said implement a function that's called that, and then the function need to have these instructions to do these things, right? So even without that command to tell ChatGPT that I actually need a Python function, it has no problem interpreting that and it's able to create this function called initialize parameters, have all these arguments inside, and it's able to start generating some random numbers. It's able to define w1, b1, w2, and then of course after that you have b2 according to the dimension that I want to give in the beginning of the instructions that I give the ChatGPT algorithm. And as you can see, it even has assert. How on earth does it know to have this assert statement? I didn't say anything about assert statement. In the instructions, I just said make sure parameter sizes are right. And it's able to take that as knowledge and come up with an idea to say, okay, how do I make sure that's correct? Let's have an assert statement. So I would say from a level of sophistication of this output, it's interesting and safe to say that ChatGPT may actually be above human level skills. And look at this output. That's exactly the same as what I have here. That's amazing. So I thought this is a very interesting discovery. And then if this doesn't surprise you, which should have been, then let's continue to even more difficult exercises. Here we have a forward propagation, it's just a dot product, so I'm gonna skip this part because it's relatively easy for ChatGPT. 
So let's come to the next exercise. This is actually very interesting. It says define a cost function. So the task itself might be very straightforward, right? There's a formula, you just type it out. And the solution is one line of code. But what I'm interested to see here is if ChatGPT can interpret latex. So here I am copy this long line of latex into ChatGPT. And I'm doing literally nothing else. I'm just copying here and I say, create a Python function. And that's it. And I'm going to give computer this question and see what ChatGPT does. And I wait a little bit and boom, here you go. It starts to define the compute cost function with three input, right? We have A2, Y, and parameters. Whereas A2 is the argument, it's coming out of the sigmoid output, Y is the ground truth. Obviously you have ground truth and your prediction, that's how you compute the cost function. Now here, it does things a little bit more differently because it's computing it as two lines, right? And why does it compute two lines? Because the interesting thing here is, look at this cost function. Inside of the summation, there are two big terms, right? y log a plus 1 minus y log 1 minus a. So if you're a human to do this, and you've done this many times, I'm able to come up with this one line of code and have everything embedded in there. That's because I've seen similar things before. I know this function will work out well. Now what ChatGPT is doing is, it's actually breaking down to two lines. So the two terms adding together part, that's inside of the summation. That actually consists of one line by itself called the log props. And then it takes a sum and then take division to create the final cost function by throwing in the output of the first line inside of this np.sum function. So in other words, it is taking what I'm writing here and turning to two lines. And then on top of that, it checks that if this number is exactly what you want, right? If it's, a, it's data type, it's flow, it's a numerical number, it's not some nested list or something, right? So it's able to check all of that, have a zero statement, and then return the final result. So I would say that this is kind of like the textbook answer, right? If I want to be truly careful, I should probably write like this. But I'm lazy, right? I'm lazy when I'm doing this exercise. I just want to get the points and move on. I don't really care about making this pretty. So I write everything in one line of code, get it work, and that's my expected results. I get all the tests passed, and that's my goal. So there you go. Now you kind of get a taste of the distinction and the difference between ChatGPT and a human programmer. If you like the episode, give a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.